welcome to this July Bullet Journal Plan With Me video. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Anna and today we'll create this summery monthly setup with some leaf drawings and a pretty soft and neutral color palette. But let's just get started right away and first we're gonna set up a cover spread that will also end up having this little cutout window to the monthly calendar. We're gonna start here by sketching out this big lemon branch that's hanging from the top of the page. I really wanted to include a lot of these big leaf decorations in this monthly theme and focus on the line art aspect a little bit more. This style is definitely inspired by Michaela from Blumen Dot, who you can find from Instagram and also here on YouTube. She's been one of my favorite creators to follow recently. I just absolutely love her style and I think she deserves way more followers. So definitely go check her out. But yeah, I feel like we've been painting a lot for the past few months. So I was kind of craving for some simple drawings that we can create directly in the notebook. And I also wanted to use this opportunity to practice drawing leaves. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I draw flowers, I feel like leaves are the part for me that I always try to avoid and just quickly get over with as the very last step. So this time I wanted to really challenge myself to pay attention to them. And I think this line art style is perfect for that because you really need to focus on those shadows and the directions of all the details when the leaves curl in different ways. So we are starting with a pencil sketch as usual and I wanted to make this first sketch pretty detailed because I was still trying to figure out this style myself. I wanted these leaves to have a lot of details and variation in the darkness so I tried to prepare myself for that by drawing the shadow areas with the pencil too. In the rest of the video, I will mainly focus on the inking phase to save some time, but at home, you can always draw everything with a pencil first. But actually, before we go over the lines with a black pen and talk about the drawing style a little bit more, I thought I would like this theme to have some paper accents maybe under some of these leaves. So I took out just a regular copy paper and decided to just quickly color this with watercolors to get this very natural, uneven wash of color. I used the washi tapes to hold the paper in place so that the corners wouldn't start curling too much. And then she started to apply some messy layers on it using this medium sized flat brush. The color doesn't need to be completely even and it's quite difficult to achieve that on a copy paper anyway. But I think that all the unevenness just added more of that natural texture to the paper. So after the color layer, I let this completely dry. And as you can see, the colors usually even out a little bit by themselves too. And then I just started to rip some accents from this to the corners of this cover page. I think these glue rollers are a super functional way to attach stuff to your journal. And after having these papers in place, we can finish the leaf crunch sketches and then finally start going over everything with the black pens. At this point, I wasn't still sure if I wanted to keep these leaves black and white or color them with watercolors. So we're slowly adding intensity to them while we progress with this whole spread. I started with the pen size 02 and then used the thicker 05 in the end to thicken some of the outer lines of the leaves and then the thinner 005 to add some small strokes over the darker areas. I think it would be very helpful to look through some pencil or ink drawings of leaves and kind of get an idea of the style and amount of strokes you'll need here. This style definitely felt out of my comfort zone. So in the beginning, I was kind of struggling here a little bit. 
I didn't really know what I was doing to be honest. But when you just keep going, you kind of start to get the feel for this and how to place the darker and lighter areas on different sides of the leaves. I think I often try to make one side of the leaf darker and adding some darkness, especially to the middle bridge of the leaf will help you with that. You can also try some different details. For example, in some leaves here, I just added some small dots and scribbles over the strokes. And I think all that adds a little bit more realistic look to the leaves. But other than that, don't be afraid to go super dark on some areas and then leave others completely blank. I think that looks very nice, especially if you look at the leaves a little bit further away. After we have all these leaves drawn over with the black pens, we're finally gonna make the cutout window on the right page. Because having this in place will help us see the final colors and also the placement for the July title. So I wanted the monthly calendar to show through from this window. And then when we flip it over, I wanted the July title to be in the middle of it. So we can kind of get some use out of this cutout thing on both of these spreads. I always use this paper knife for this. But after the window was created, you'll see me just sliding this green paper on the other side so I could get a rough idea of the colors we'll have on this spread. So this was finally the time to decide if I wanted to add color to the leaves or leave them black and white. After thinking about it for a while, I finally decided to just color the lemons and add a little bit of color to the flowers as well with watercolors and then otherwise challenge myself by leaving the rest of the decorations black and white and adding color to this theme with other techniques instead. So for example with the papers and the title colors. So as you can see, I chose to go with this olive green color for the July title here. And we are also using this pretty interesting font I found. But I thought this thick lettering style was a good balance for the black and white decorations. And it helped to add a little bit more color to the page than maybe a thinner handwritten title would. But yeah, after the title, we're adding that quick watercolor layer to the lemons, as I mentioned. And I also darkened some of the leaves even further with the black pens. If you would prefer coloring the leaves as well, I think this theme would look so beautiful with some dark green leaves. And then leaving the title fonts maybe a little bit more neutral instead. But I don't know, I think sometimes it's fun to challenge yourself. And at least I really enjoyed the idea of using colors here in different ways. But now we are finally done with the cover spread and let's flip over to the monthly calendar side where we can finish this calendar first. I'll show you here some papers I printed out for this theme. So we have this light green color and then this basic white grid background. If you have notebooks with a grid like this, that will work perfectly. But I'll also add both of these sheets in my shop in the freebies section. So you can go download them for free and print them out for yourself if you have an access to a printer. I'll also add some color palettes from the yearly setup I posted last week in case you want to download those too. But yeah, the calendar itself is really basic. So I drew this white grid on it. And each day here has three times five dot rows. And then I tried to keep the numbers super small to maintain this minimal aesthetic here. The grid paper 
paper actually ended up being pretty close to my notebook paper color so you can barely see it behind the calendar but anyway next I just wrote the weekday letters to the top of the calendar using the same pen and font we used for the July title After that, I thought this page needed some leaf decorations too and I wanted to keep everything here pretty similar with the cover spread so that these two look like they match together. I tried to draw the leaves in a way that we could use these small white spaces on the cutout window where the leaves overlapped with it on the other side. And I kind of liked how it looks like there are leaves in two different layers around the title. color to the lemons I still felt like the spread looked a little bit bare and needed some more color especially in the bottom left corner so I decided to add this light green watercolor wash around the leaves which helped at least a little bit and then we'll finish the spread by writing this scruply quote to the other corner which says sorry I'm busy I'm hanging out with my plants But that's finally it for the cover and monthly calendar combination here. I must say I really like this style here and all these light neutral colors are something I've really loved recently. And before we move on, I want to take a quick moment to let you guys know that I designed a new washi tape collection in collaboration with the washi tape shop and that's finally out now. The new set is called Petals and Parchment and it consists of two regular washi tapes and two washi sticker tapes. So if you've been looking for some new washi tapes, definitely check them out. You can also get 10% off of their whole selection with my affiliate code Journal Away. But that's that and now let's move on to this next spread. So I wanted one page in this setup to be fully covered with the green color and thought this next one would be perfect for it. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you might know that we have this yearly tradition every July to include a letter for ourselves in one year from now. So basically we are writing a little bit about where we are currently at in our life and then make some predictions of how our life will look like in one year and then it's really fun to read that and see how much everything has changed on the way. Anyway, so I want to create this simple pocket for this page where we can put the letter and I think I just used some random photo paper piece but pretty much any paper would work for this. But before gluing anything down just yet, I decided to draw another planned illustration under the pocket. So at this point I started to feel a little bit more comfortable with this style after the first drawings. So I didn't sketch this one out quite as much and just decided to go in with the black pen after deciding the main placements of the different branches. I think I made the leaves even darker in this picture and I actually really liked how this one turned out. This was also really fast and fun to draw and you can really practice this scribbly, messy drawing style with it where you don't need to pay too much attention to any small details. You can see that especially when I drew the flowers here, I have no idea what plant this would be or what these flowers are, but I think somehow it still worked.
But after the plan was done, I glued the pocket on the, the page. Be careful not to glue the sides together. So we want to be able to slide the paper inside of the pocket and just attach the edges to the page. Then finally, I decided to finish this page with a title at the top that simply says in one year from now. So I used the same font from before and I must say that this was probably my favorite page from the whole setup. I just love the colors and everything together here. But after that, let's move on. So I didn't really have anything specific in mind for this other page. So I decided to just make it into this simple weekly diary thing. Again, when we come back to this page, hopefully one year later to read the letter, it might be fun to read some weekly highlights of our life here too. So I think these two pages kind of fit together pretty well in the end. I think these W's ended up looking a little bit weird here, but anyway, after everything was done here, it's time to move on and next we'll set up a whole spread for the monthly planning. I want the main accent on this spread to be this big ribbed watercolor background which will look a little bit weird at first, but after we have all the details done, I think it blended with the rest pretty well. So the planning pages are something that I usually use to get a clear vision of what I want to accomplish in one month. If I don't do this, I feel like I'll try to achieve too much and then I will feel disappointed in myself when I can't do all of it. So personally, I really try to use these pages to narrow down my focus on only a few key things I want to accomplish because even if it feels like a long time in the beginning of the month, one month actually goes by so fast that you wonder where all that time went. But yeah, I added one leaf branch on this page as well. To be honest, I was kind of getting tired of drawing these already. This is why I always try to avoid having very similar decorations on my spreads. But we only have a few of them left, so we'll just speed through them. Then I wanted to start the second page by listing some productive habits that I could try to integrate to my daily life. I've been really struggling with keeping a routine recently. So I've had this bad habit of working too late and then I feel like automatically the next day will also have a rough start and then it just becomes this cycle that's really difficult to correct after a while. So I hope that listing some good habits here would motivate me to get my act together. But then the last thing I wanted to include here on this spread is this 15th check-in box. I only had room to write 15 check here, so I guess that will do. And this is something that I will use to revisit this page in the middle of the month and write a small update of where I'm going with my monthly plan. So are we still on schedule or is there something I need to take more seriously? But that's it for our minimal monthly planning spread. And now let's flip over to the last section of this monthly theme, which will of course be the weekly layout. I wanted to go back to one of my trusty weekly layouts, which is this Dutch door system that leaves the outer edges of the spread open. 
I think I cut five pages here in total because we're gonna use the last spread for a monthly review and then we have four and a half spreads for the weeks in July. I decided to frame the Dutch door section with these green paper stripes because I think it looks so pretty underneath and again adds that green accent here. But then let's start to build all the details here first starting from the left side. So I think a small calendar is always super helpful on these weekly pages. And then underneath it we'll draw yet another lemon branch. I'll speed through these last two drawings a little bit in this video because I feel like we've established how to draw them by now. The only difference I wanted to make for this upper corner illustration was this sliced lemon. It was simply because I wanted something else to draw and I think there is nothing more fresh looking than an open lemon. And I think having these two here added a nice yellow pop of color to this whole spread. But then let's start to fill the middle section by first setting up this left side again that I want to dedicate for my monthly favorites. These are some of my favorite sections to fill in my blood journal in the end of the month and I always try to come up with some new things to include here. Then we have the simple weekly layout in the middle. So first we're gonna set up this half week here. And after that, one spread will be for one full week. There's nine dot rows between the days here. And I think this will be more than enough for me to write some daily task lists. I often just list maybe two to four things in here and those are usually more work related tasks. So I personally leave a lot of stuff out from these pages if something is more of an automatic task like most house chores and stuff like that. I actually think I might return to the weekly task list approach again next month because I sometimes feel like I'm a little bit lazy to keep up with my daily task lists and there's at least one a week every month that I forget that my blood journal even exists. But I don't really mind that too much because in my opinion the key to long-term journaling is definitely finding that balance for yourself and not beating yourself up if there are empty sections or times that you don't open up the journal super religiously. But anyway, I'll set up the other weeklies later and then let's flip over to this last spread here and I'll use this one for some simple questions to answer in the end of the month. So having a small review like this really helps me to collect my thoughts and think about the areas I need to work on moving forward. I think it's so interesting how fast we start to forget things and fall back to the same patterns as before. So this usually serves as the monthly reminder for me that oh yeah, I really need to improve my sleeping rhythm or work-life balance or whatever it might be. But then the very last little section here on this grid paper will be for the things I'm grateful for. And after that, we are finally done with this July theme. I think this was one of the fastest themes I've set up in a while because I've been quite busy with my shop summer launch and also the mid-year setup and all other crazy stuff that always weirdly seems to pile up. But I hope you enjoyed this theme nevertheless and let me know if you have any requests for the upcoming themes too. The digital version of this one will be up in my shop in about two days after this video goes up. So go check it out if you're interested. 
But other than that, I guess that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.